the history of anime, there have been many creators who are known for their distinctive characteristics. However, no one can compare to Yuasa Masaki in terms of uniqueness. Yuasa Masaki is by far the most idiosyncratic director that the anime industry has ever seen, and his unusual characteristics can be observed by anyone familiar with his works. He came from an animator background and gained much popularity from his work with Crayon Shinchan as a key animator. Since his debut as a director in 2004, he has produced some of the most distinguishing anime works of all time, which include Kaiba, Yojohang Shinwa Taike, and Pingpong the Animation. In this video, I would like to examine Yuasa's style in different periods. I have divided his directorial career into early, middle, and recent. Then, I will discuss his characteristics through his works from each period and observe how his style has evolved. The early period of Yuasa's directorial career includes works such as Mind Game, Yumemiru Kikai from Genius Party, and Kaiba. In these works, we can observe Yuasa's characteristics quite clearly. The first characteristic is a dynamic movement. Although many other directors and studios, such as Imaishi Hiroyuki and Yoshinari Yo from Trigger and Miura Takahiro and Sudo Tomonori from Yufotobo are known for dynamic movements, Yuasa differs from them in many aspects. Compared to other directors, he exaggerates characters' movements quite dramatically to the point where they seem unrealistic. Also, the movements feel much more powerful and dynamic than other directors usually depict. In Mind Game, for instance, the scene where Nishiyama and his friends try to escape from the giant whale's belly portrays dynamic movements that are impossible in reality. Nishiyama rushes along the impossibly large tidal wave as he steps on falling objects along the way. Other people are doing the same thing that seems absolutely inconceivable. By depicting movements in such a way, Yuasa induces a feeling of euphoric and primal joy that borders on drug-induced ecstasy. The second characteristic is a unique character and world design. Kaiba is the best example that shows this characteristic. Characters are drawn in sharp lines and edges, making them seem quite poorly designed at first glance. The coloring looks rough, and the details are missing. The world where these characters live is a peculiar place that seems completely alien and surreal. Third characteristic is imagination. Yuasa focuses heavily on creativity and imagination in his works, and this characteristic is the most prominent in his early works. In Yumemiru Kikai, for example, we can clearly see Yuasa's creativity. Things such as a robot that looks like a mother, a fire monster that tries to become friends with the protagonist, and a strange creature that brings life to trees from his feces look nothing like we usually see in ordinary anime. Also in Mind Game, the scene where the main characters dance around in ecstasy demonstrates Yuasa's creative prowess. Nevertheless, Yuasa's early works are not without flaws. The most prominent shortcoming is that they are too avant-garde in nature. Even though Yuasa's early works have distinctive characteristics that appeal to a certain crowd, the general audience will definitely have difficulty understanding them. To make matters worse, the narrative is quite weak in general, since Yuasa focuses much on the creative aspect instead of coming up with a coherent story. As a result, Yuasa's early works fail to appeal to a broader audience, which is somewhat unfortunate since they have much potential to become something greater. The middle period of Yuasa's directorial career includes works such as Yojohang Shinwa Taike, Ping Pong the Animation, and Yoruwa Mijikashi Arukeo Otome. In this period, Yuasa's characteristics from the early period remain mostly the same. Similar to what we see in his early works, Yuasa focuses on dynamic movements. In episode 11 of Ping Pong the Animation, for instance, the scene where the two protagonists play a ping pong game shows dynamic movements that feel exaggerated and powerful. 
His works from the middle period also present unusual character and world design. In conjunction with the character designer Ito Nobutake, Iwasa creates a strange motley of characters that characterizes each of his works. For example, Ozu and Higuchi Seitaro from Yojohan Shima Taike represent Iwasa's style with sharp lines and edges, uneven coloring, and a deliberate lack of details. Episode 11 of Yojohan Shima Taike shows Iwasa's distinctive world design as the protagonist becomes lost in an infinite maze of tatami rooms, which looks surreal and bizarre. Finally, Yuasa's imagination and creativity are very noticeable in his works from the middle period. Both Yojohan Shima Taike and Yoruwa Michikashi Arukeo Otome demonstrate Yuasa's creative prowess with strange events happening around the protagonists. In terms of shortcomings in Yuasa's early works, we see some noticeable improvements. Unlike his early works that lack a coherent story, his works from the middle period all have solid plots. In addition, Yuasa shies away from avant-garde expressions that the general audience could not embrace or understand while maintaining his distinctive style. As a result, his works have become much more widely accepted, which I find quite welcoming. The recent period of Yuasa's directorial career includes works such as Devilman Crybaby, Himito Nami ni Noretara, and Eizo Kenniwa Teodasna. In these works, the characteristics seen from earlier periods are all present. First, dynamic movements are well depicted. In Devilman Crybaby, for instance, the scenes demonstrate dynamic movements that are much more exaggerated and powerful than what we usually see in other anime. Unusual character and world designs can be observed in all of his recent works as well. In Kimito Nami ni Noretara, for example, we see a protagonist's boyfriend who appears as a spirit inside water after he dies in an accident. His design is strange as he looks slimy and blobby as if he were part of the water. Lastly, Iwasa's emphasis on imagination is evident. For example, in Eizo Kenyu wa Teodasuna, we see a group of high school students trying to make anime. As they talk about their upcoming anime project, their imagination becomes a reality. The chase scene, the fight scene, impossible machines, and fantastical buildings and landscapes. By blurring the boundary between imagination and reality, Yuasa shows the power of creativity, which I find quite intriguing. In terms of his shortcomings, he has improved even further. His once incomprehensible avant-garde expressions are mostly gone, and the narrative is solid and easily understandable in all of his recent works. However, this does not mean that Yuasa has lost his edge. His distinctive style remains stronger than ever, and he has succeeded in overcoming his shortcomings by embracing ideas that can appeal to a wider audience. As a result, he has become a more competent director. Yuasa Masaaki has produced some of the most distinctive anime works of all time. Although his early works had some glaring flaws, he has managed to fix them by focusing more on the narrative while retaining the core characteristics that constitute his style. Thanks to his unique talents, I have met some great anime works over the years, and I'm waiting for more greatness from him for years to come. Thank you for watching.